Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitch and Mommy, and it's Monday, April 27th, I believe, and I'm here for a stitching update. And it's the last week in April, which means the Stitch Mania is coming. <laughs> so I will, towards the end of the week, um, I guess Saturday? Friday. I think Friday is May 1st. And then so I'll be starting Stitch Mania, my monogamous mania version. Um, I do plan on starting probably two things in May, but I'll be doing that after the first 20 days in May because I would like to have the first 20 days of May be my monogamous plans to be finishing Quick, quick Stitch Anne of Green Gables and then work on Quick Stitch Iris with whatever days remain in that 20 day chunk. <clears throat> which is a little bit ma manic for me because I don't usually stitch monogamously, although I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm a little nervous because I may want to stitch more monogamously in the future, which doesn't work with following prompts and challenges and things. I don't know. I like both both ways of potentially tackling my stitching, so it's always, always hard uh, to choose what to do. Anyways, but I do have a Mill Hill Buttons and Beads kit I want to start probably on the 21st, with um, Christine from Calico Stitches, and there's also the May Day celebration by Joan Elliott that would be fun to start in the month of May. Um, so I will pull that out later when it gets closer to the time, but and I don't know what day I'll be starting that. If anyone else has a plan to start a Joan Elliott at some point, let me know if it's towards the later end of the month, and maybe we can start on the same day, because it is fun to start things with friends. Um, I'm kind of not really feeling the starts, probably because I've started so many small little things. I've started teacher gifts, I've started these little like mystery sows with the Fat Quarter Shop. And so starting a lot of personal projects just seems not needed, I guess. But starting things for the go along with somebody's birthday or if somebody else is wanting to st stitch the same thing and they'll start on the same day with you, that's really f a lot more meaningful than just starting things to be starting things for me anyways. And so if you have something that you like, if you know that I have something and you have something, you know, it'd be fun to get together and start on the same day. And I have a couple of those that I'll be doing this year later on. So I might just stick with those starts instead of all the starts that I was thinking of. So we'll see. I have another administrative thing to talk about before we get started. My seven winners from two, two videos ago, I pulled these names out of my basket and I was contacted via email by these top five people. And these last two, DP with Fibro and Alexandria, I haven't received an email from you and I've, I checked my spam folder so I'm not sure. Um, if I missed it somehow, but um, if you could email me again, I'll put it up here, stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com and let me know which pattern from my Etsy shop you would like. I can get that emailed out to you. If for some reason you can't email me or it's not working on your end, you can also try a private message on Instagram. I'm stitchinmommy on Instagram. You can also try a private message in Etsy. My shop is stitchinmommy on Etsy and you can send me a, a converse, like a private conversation on there or even on, on Facebook, you can send me a message on Facebook. So if, so if email is not working for some reason, you can try one of those other ways and I'll hopefully get it and can get you your free, free pattern. So that's that. I would like everybody to enjoy that who won. And let's see, let's, I, I worked on, I, I thought I would go through my, um, travel stitching <laughs> since we're not traveling anymore it's not really travel stitching but my bonus my bonus random smalls I guess I worked on the new feels like home mystery stitch along by the fat quarter shop I worked on that this week and so it's it's uh, I finished part one I just filmed a clip of part one which I'll show you in next week's video because the part one comes out on the first which is Friday so since it's a mystery stitch along, I'm holding back the results of my stitching until <clears throat> um, after they release. So I'll probably post a picture of it on the first on Instagram, but I won't share it on my video until my next scheduled 
um, video, which will be next week. So, um, I didn't get to Bloomtopia. I was kind of hoping I could get the next part in Bloomtopia done as well, but this part one of the Feels Like Home took a little bit too long, and so I decided just to scrap that and I'll work on that next. Um, I'm already ahead on that one, so I don't have to worry about that too much. So, um, the next part in the Feels Like Home style is a little bigger too, so I may even wait another week to work on Bloomtopia just to make sure I don't get behind on the Feels Like Home. Um, but I did work on my tree last night. <clears throat> I decided to work, I decided to do the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Marathon, which was this past weekend. I had never done that before because I know that I can't devote that much time to stitching with a family around me. Um, I just have too many other things that I should be doing to, you know, shut off everything else and just stitch. Like, my life does not allow that. And so I have been getting a little bit more stitching time on the weekends with this new, you know, at-home situation. But I still didn't get, like, a ton of time. I was kind of shooting for 12 hours and I got around 10 and a half. So, I mean, not too bad. I still tracked my hours. Um... What I chose to do is to work on, I was hoping to maybe do the Feels Like Home part one on Friday and then work on my stitching shelf. And then Saturday I'd work on Bloomtopia, I think part eight or nine is the one I'm on now, and then and then stitching shelf. And then Sunday I'd work on my temperature tree and then stitching shelf. That was my original plan. But the part one of the Feels Like Home took a little bit too long, so I ended up working on that both Friday and Saturday before I worked worked on the stitching shelf. Got that done, which is nice, um, but I didn't get to Bloomtopia. Anyways, but I did work on the tree on Sunday. So this is the mock-up of this, and I didn't get any more branch done this time because I wanted to do as much on the stitching shelf as I could, and um, so I just did leaves. But you will notice something in how this looks now. like summer is coming to SoCal. <laughs> so this is on 28 count, one over one, full crosses. And we had 91 degree weather here on Friday and Saturday. And these were in the 80s over here. So it, it finally got warm. <laughs> we had all of these pink ones right in here that were down into the 50s. And now we're in the 90s already, so it was kind of relatively quick turnaround in the weather, so I'm not sure if it's going to be warm from here on out or if it'll kind of fluctuate still, so I guess we'll see. So, got some new colors on my tree. And I guess that's all of the random stitching that I did. All the rest that I did was for the Enchanted Stitching Challenges group. So the first thing I worked on this week was Dragon Ride by Teresa Wensler. And I went ahead and just finished the border out the outside border line. And that was a little over 300 stitches, so it worked out just nice. It worked out nicely to get it done for the enchanted stitching and not have too much to think about with that one. So this is how it looks now compared to last time. And bring it up a little bit more. So now that border is all the way done with the outside borders. Obviously, I still need to fill in. This this small chunk is completely finished where there's like back stitching and beads. There's three colors of petite beads and back stitching and multiple colors of cross stitches in the braided braided area. So that will be all the way around. So next time I pull this out, I'm not sure if I'm going to want to continue with that lightest shade, this one, that is in the border as well, if I want to go back to the dragon. I'm kind of thinking I want to go back to the dragon. I've been in the border for a while now, so I might want to pick a like a, a, one of the blue shades maybe and fill in more of the blue. Tealy, the tealy blue color in like the neck and the feet and the wings and stuff. I think I'll be maybe do that next time. I'm hoping 
also at the end of May, the last 10 days in May, 11 days in May, I'll have the two starts and I'll work on all six family pieces. So that'll fill up my, the end of the month, pretty, pretty snugly there <laughs> with plans. So my May is like scheduled out, maxed out. <clears throat> the next thing I worked on three different full coverage pieces. So I think the next one I worked on was, oh, I have that to show too. Okay. I'll do that later. Um, end of the ball. I think that's the next one I worked on, which is one I worked on last week. And I just kept going on it for a prompt. This one is a golden kite. And I was really happy with how far I got. So it was fun to just keep going on it. And I wanted to try to get two chunks done on these pieces in, in the month. That's the other thing. <clears throat> There's also the full coverage fanatics around the world in May. So in 11 days, I'll have two starts, one, two, three, four, five, six finishes, or six family pieces and two full coverage pieces. So every single day we'll have a project. Hmm. That seems like complete opposite stitching from like the first 20 days will be really monogamous and then the last 11 will be a different project every day. So that'll be a little interesting. So anyways, that is what it is, I guess. Um, yeah, so end of the ball. Pretty happy with this. So here it is now. This is on 24 count Congress cloth, two over one, half stitches. And here it is compared to last week. And I finished up the 10 by 10 square that was here and I think the one below it because there was a hole there that I just didn't want to leave. It's only one stitch. I'm like, I can't just leave that there. So, um, finished a couple 10 by 10 blocks and just carried them wherever they went. Some of the colors in here were harder to find, so they got scattered around farther. But the very last color I did came all the way down here. And do you know what this is? This is right next to her head. The girl in, in the ball. I was kind of surprised. I didn't realize I was that close. So I got all the way, all the way here. So that's exciting. And I was really tempted to keep going. Like, no, I have other things that I want to do just as much as this. So that's a fun place to stop. But I'm really de debating whether I should continue up here or go down here. Because you know me, like when I did the uh, mini princess of the sea, once I hit her, I just had to work on her and forgot the background. <laughs> But there's so much background that needs to be done too, so I don't know. I may I may need to work on her a little bit, but she's pretty confetti heavy, so it may it probably won't be as easy to do as the Princess of the Sea, like to be able to see her come to life quite as quickly. So I'm I don't know. I may just work more in the background next time. But this won't come out for a little while. Again, unless it fits a prompt. I don't know what you, what month it comes back out for Full Coverage Fanatics. I'm assuming it has one more, but not necessarily. Mm, not all of them did. No, I don't have another Full Coverage Fanatics one. So this one will only, have, only come out again this year if I pull it out for another prompt just for fun. So, which I very well made because I like it. I like all of my pieces. So, um, then I worked on April Fairy. I can't be putting this one back here. It's, I got lots more full coverage to show you. So here's Quick Stitch April Fairy because it's April. I wanted to work on her at least once in April. And this one was interesting because this is the one that I was asking you guys or kind of what I should do if I should continue with the stitch by stitch meticulous diagonal stitching that I had been doing on this one or just let cross country take over because I have pattern keeper now and my original thought was I was probably gonna let pattern keeper take over and do cross country but when I got it out I realized 
because of the method that I'm using, I'm stitching it starting in a different corner than I usually do. And so it's kind of hard to explain. So let me show you. I continued doing what I had been doing. So here it is now compared to last time. And it's pink, pink fabric. So I almost finished another diagonal. Really tempted to keep going on this one too, but I knew because there's so many color changes, it would take a little while to get the last of that done. So I just decided to stop because um, um, the weekend was coming with Full Coverage Fanatics, Egg Hunt, Easter Egg Hunt, and the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, and Jesse Marie's Birthday Sal, and all those things were this weekend. So I, I didn't want to push anything into the weekend. So really happy with this, and I was really enjoying the way I was working on it. So I continued with that. Um, I may have a video of how I worked on this, but what I'm doing is I'm starting, I'm stitching where I always come up in a hole that has zero or one threads in it and going down in a hole with two or three so that your stitches will late be neater. And I don't usually stitch like this, but on this piece I thought it'd be fun to try this method. And it is kind of fun. And another piece with more confetti, I would probably go bananas. But this one is fairly easy because even in the places where there's multiple color changes, you park it fairly close by. You don't have to park most things like really far away or, or put it away in the bobbin box because there's no more anywhere to be found, like some patterns. So it is a little bit easier to do it this way. So I'm okay with continuing. Um, how I'm doing it though is I'm like starting here and going this way as far as my stitches go like if I were to have like on some of these black lines I have a whole line of black on occasionally I'll start here and go this way and then back with my legs normally if I'm over here which is where I usually start and I do the first leg this way and then come back I'll I'll be tempted to creep out and do my cross country this way as my stitches go out I'm like oh I can head over and do these two and then come back you know like so I kind of creep farther and farther out this way but when I'm starting here and going this way it's I don't want to count all the way here to start my line and then come back this way it just doesn't it doesn't work like to count out to start the line and then stitch this way because it's not just the way that I stitch it doesn't didn't work to kind of come out if I had, if this black kept going to here, I'd have to count all the way out here to, to start the black uh, or stitch one stitch at a time all the way out here. And that's just not, I don't know. I decided I wanted to keep doing it this way because of the way it was working and I'm happy with it. So that's all there is to it. <laughs> if I completely confused you, I am sorry. It makes sense to me. And I am continuing to enjoy this one. This is on 28 count rose monaco one over one full crosses and i'm happy with where i got so this will come out again for a full coverage fanatics most likely not sure when i think it comes out for like the american one because it's by an american designer or an american artist not sure which one december so it's not technically slotted in for full coverage and at full coverage fanatics and around the world until December, but I may bring it out for a challenge before then as well, because it's pretty. So I'm glad I got a little bit done on that. And then my last one for this week, was that the last one? Yeah. One, two, three, four. My last one was a stitching shelf. And this is one that ended up filling four prompts, not four, three, three prompts. So yeah, four, <laughs> four. So I worked on this for a prompt in Enchanted Stitching and I worked on this for Full Coverage Fanatics Easter Egg Hunt Weekend and I worked on it for 24 Hours of Cross Stitch and I worked on it for Jessie Marie's Birthday Sal because she was this year was her 32nd birthday, which you could also, that sounds a lot like 30 seconds. 
So she was labeling her birthday sal as the shortest birthday sal because it's only 30 seconds long. <laughs> and do something that has to do with time. Well, the original design with the medallion in the middle is a stitch in time. And there's seasons, which is a representation of time. And there's, there's an hourglass right here. And there's a clock on the mantle right here. So those are also time. So on Saturday, I worked on that hourglass to go along with the birthday sal for Jesse. And then the rest of the time, I worked a lot on shelving and getting, there's some down this book to help connect the shelves. And I did a little bit in this vignette right here with these two people. And I think a little bit over here as well because of the string, there was a string parked right there. So this one, is the one you, you'll you can look up now and look at the before picture because it fills up the entire screen and and this is where it is now and hopefully you can see that is it tall enough so this is where it is now and I think I might try before and afters <clears throat> close up. So here's the hourglass that I did. So do before and after of that section. So I did like three or four colors in there on the hourglass. This is 28 count tea dyed Monaco, two over one half stitches. I also worked on this bit right here. So maybe I'll try to do a before and after of that bit where I worked in these people. This is the man, the man standing here watching his lady do deal, do stitching. And then I caught up with the, I had one color in them already. So I just filled out that color with, this is the same color as that it was in here. So I did that, that color in here and then caught, counted closely to the shelf and was able to work on some more of that shelf because it broke up with like, the shelf stopped in here, that color, with the um, like bushes or whatever that was there. So that, um, I did that part on that shelf. And then I came down here. This I think this might have been one of the first things I did. There was a string parked here. So I went up and did this part and then came over and was doing some of this. Actually, no, I don't think I did this yet. I came up here and did this part with that string and then later I counted down with this red dark red color and then carried it over here until my second string ran out and then I could do bookshelf I think I counted this way yeah I counted off of this one to start here and then went this way and it all lined up and did some bookshelf that way so I could do a before and after of that chunk also and this chunk so that's what I got done this time pretty fun at some point I do want to get these some of these parked threads up top worked in because they're just kind of in the way now um but I do like what I did here you know where I work on one motif at a time I think that's fun and, and Having more structure in place will help me be able to do that. Where I can pick, I can pick one specific motif and I can easily count to almost every mo motif now. Cause that's the bottom of the design right there. That's the snow at the bottom. So I can count down from that shelf to most of the, sh the winter ones as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. I have a nice structure now. So, Next time I work on this, I can work on a, mo a specific motif or specific book or work on park threads and whatnot. So that's exciting. I did notice the fabric is bigger than I need. Um, so I'm tempted to cut off some of it because this is pretty large and occasionally unwieldy, but it's still, it's still here. I, I may not bother cutting it down just because it's not necessarily worth it I guess I don't know all right so that was fun to do I don't know when that's coming out again but as you can see it it 
pretty much will fit. Uh, I gotta do, do that tighter later. It'll fit almost any prompt you throw at it, so it'll fit, uh, it'll be able to come out for anything that I can't fit something else in that prompt, I could fit that one. Um, it'll come out again in June for Germany because there was a prompt with, with the full coverage fanatics, um, based on books. So I guess Germany has some famous books. And Stitching Shelf also is coming out in, for Japan related to tea, because there's some tea, a tea set in one of them, I think. So those are the two full coverage fanatics that I have for sure that it'll, it'll come out during those months. Okay. So this week, as of like an hour or two ago, I still had not seen a new posting for Enchanted Stitching Challenges, so I'm not sure if my plans will work properly. Um, there's only four more days in April, so I have picked four projects. I'm hoping that they can work for any prompts that might come out later today, um, and if not, I'll either change them or I won't because I'm kind of in, into the ones I picked, so <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I can make them work. So I'll work on one a day, roughly, and then starting on Friday, I'll do my monogamous mania plan. So I'll show you that project as well. Um, before I get started on that, one more thing that I wanted to share that's not really current stitching related. It's more administrative, but I forgot about it because it was hiding. Yes, this weekend, the Victoria Sampler decided to start, decided to release 10 of their most, I guess not most, 10 popular patterns on PDF. So they have started to release a couple PDF only charts in the past few weeks. Um, <clears throat> but this weekend they released 10 of their original book form charts in PDF. So they picked five that the designers themselves picked as some of their favorites, and then they picked five like bestsellers. To, so they had 10 total. And the one I chose, oh, they also had a 10% 10, 10 off coupon that was only good on Saturday and Sunday. So if you go on there now, it's the PDFs are slightly less expensive than the printed pattern, which is makes sense. Um, but there's no discount currently, but I don't know. If you get on the mailing list, you might get future codes. So I decided to pick up I Love My Cat. <laughs> because I, I don't know. It's kind of silly, but I just kept seeing it and figuring, you know what? This is as good a time as any to pick this up. So it says Croucher, Jumper, Sweet Face Bumper, Stealthy, Creeper, Armchair Sleeper, My Cat, and then I Love My Cat. And it's got these cute little scenes of kitties and of course heart hanger and specialty stitches so i thought that was fun and i thought i would share a couple other victoria sampler charts because these were two of the other ones that they have released as pdfs now so if you don't already have these in chart form uh, in book form then you could go on there and get a pdf so one of the ones that they are they now have as a pdf is this heirloom nativity sampler which I have started so I'll show you my start right here it's a nice pretty uh, Christmassy one and I have started mine and see this is how they usually come in like a book form um, which is really nice they lots of specialty stitches they usually have a lot of fancy floss that they're called for but you can do I'm doing this with mostly DMC and then a few, I, I think I bought the, I bought the Gloriana, a couple Glorianas, and uh, there was a General Arts, but everything else that was a solid color, I just converted to DMC. And here's, did I bring that? Yeah. Here's mine. Oh yeah. No? I think I'm missing something that I was going to work on this week, but now I don't remember what it is. I guess we'll see. So here's where mine is now. This is on 32 count silver linen by M MCG Textiles. And I have it completed 100% beads and all from the top down. So I love this and I'm hoping to get another 
scene in the next scene with the wise men and these bands done this year so that'll happen at some point but this is one of the ones that is now available as a pdf on their site which is really helpful during these times you can still support them but then you don't have to wait in the mail or whatnot <clears throat> the other one that they have available now is the heirloom stitching sampler which i already had as well and this one is a fun one. Grandma loved her fancy work and passed it on to me, which is true. My grandma taught me how to cross stitch. My daughter found her needle art at my dear mother's knee. So that's saying like, my daughter would learn something from my mom, which she's learning how to knit from my mom. And then our love and lives are intertwined for all of us to see the threads with, with which I stitch today connect our family. So I thought that was really, really sweet and appropriate. So, cause I do have a crafty family um, and I'm planning to start this on World Cross Stitch Day later this year in August 14th, I think. I'll open up please. Yeah, August 14th, National Cross Stitch Day. So I'm gonna start this then, planning to start it with this purple fabric, which will be very different than what's on here, but I think it'll be fun. And because this is a piece I got, I think, by Shelly. And Shelly Key X Stitch, and it's really long and skinny. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. So I'm planning to start this with Colette, the highway stitcher, <coughs> who also has this chart. So if you get this chart or you already have it and you want to start it with us, let me know. You can come up with some hashtag maybe. Um, I also know that Dina Half Stitch Cross Stitch is going to start Cross Stitch Nation on National Cross Stitch Day. So it's, it's just a fun day if you are so inclined to start something needlework related, cross stitch related. So this is the one I'm going to do. So anyways, thought I would share that just for fun. So I could have sworn I had picked four cross four different projects to work on. But maybe I didn't they, like in the next four days. Because I have Nativity. I don't know. I only have three up here, plus the one for Stitch Mania starting. So I can, since Enchanted Stitching goes through the weekend, like I could always include my Stitch Mania one for Enchanted Stitching as my fourth one. So that may be what I'll do, and they'll give me more time to get some nice progress on these first three. So anyways, I wanted one more. If I think of it later, I'll just at it but I don't have it here with me <laughs> so I don't know what I was thinking um I didn't write it down clearly so I wanted to get one more week on one more rotation done on the nativity by Donna Gelsinger I worked on this a couple weeks ago it was part of the full coverage fanatics around the world south for Egypt because it has palm tree in it and the uh, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus went to live in Egypt for a while so here's where I'm at right now with this one. And I was working in parked threads last time. And I'm hoping to maybe get these parked threads worked in this time, which will probably work mostly down here in the wise man. So that will be my goal. It looks like not very many, but they're long strings and I think they will have a lot of stitches in here. So if I get more than this, that's bonus, like icing on the cake. I'm hoping to at least get these done. So. There's that. This is also a 28 count Monaco. This is in white that I got at a craft store. I don't know if craft stores still sell Monaco, but I had this and that's what I'm using. This is also two over one half stitches like, like I'm doing um, the stitching shawl. <clears throat> and I have page one finished, so now I'm working on all the rest of it because I'm not sticking to individual pages anymore. I'm going where the threads take me, following Pattern Keeper. <laughs> so there's that one. And then I thought it would be fun to work on a Mirabilia. I'm trying to think. I just had this in the back of my mind that there was something else along with the nativity that I wanted to work on this, this week. I don't know because I'm all done with my with my um, family stitching. 
So anyways, I was thinking of working on a Mirabilia. And originally I was thinking to do Ashley's Roses, but then when I went to my Mirabilia box, I remembered that I had started this one earlier this year. This is Roses of Province. And I only had one rotation on this. So this one needs some more love. And it is nice and springy also, so perfect for this month. This one is done on... Do I still have my paper? I thought I... I thought I included my little paper from Color and Cotton to know what color fabric I'm using, but I don't see it in here now. Oh, here it is. This is Stonehenge. Stonehenge by Color and Cotton. And it is really pretty fabric. It's purples and greens. Very nice. So here's my start. I started in the middle, worked my way up these dark bits of her dress, and did a little bit of the white in her dress, and worked out to her hand in skin tones so that I eventually want to work up, you know, do her face. But we'll see if I do... Um, yeah, so I'll probably work on skin, you know, get to get more you know, like arms and head and everything done because I do like to do hands. I could also do just more arms and do the rose that she's holding because technically the topiary tree is taller than her head. I don't know that I'll do the border around the outside. That seems unnecessary because nothing is cut off by it. So I think it would look, I don't, I don't think I'll do that. So I may go over and do the topiary, but I may also work my way up to her face. We shall see. But there, there's my start on that one. So I'll work on that. Get at least 250 stitches on that one. And this is 32 count linen in the Stonehenge colorway by Color and Cotton. So pretty. It's green. Oh, I love this. It doesn't, it's a little bit more saturated than you can see in the video. It's really nice, really pretty green with little hints of purple thrown in there. So I think it'll really complement this design. And then the other one I was thinking would be fun to pull out again is the, oh, I gotta fix this so it doesn't catch on my fabric. I'll do that one later too. Um, would be to work on my story some more since I only got a little bit done on this. I didn't, I didn't get a little bit, I got a decent amount but I would like to get more. <laughs> so I got down to the bottom of this band, so I'd like to do some more bands. And here, these are all specialty stitches in this, in this band, so it's a lot of fun. Each leg of the stitch is worth half a stitch. And this is on 32 count lamb's wool uh, linen. And everything's stitched with one strand, even the cross stitches and lots of different specialty stitches. And this color is not green. <laughs> it's tan and tan and gray. <sighs> I wish you could see it the way I can see it, but that's all right. So that's where I'm starting from, and I will hopefully get a few more bands done with some blues and different colors in here. So, And I'm doing my own conversion on this one with just fancy floss I had in my stash. Um, lots of pretty colors. So, kind of based on what they called for, but going along more with my personal aesthetic as well. And then, I think that was, so those three, I guess, are the main ones that I'll work on Monday through Thursday. And then, with the start of Stitch Mania, I will come over here and work on Quick Stitch and of Green Gables. And that will be my main project until it's done. And I will work on it. I will also allow myself to work on the fat quarter shop cells and my temperature tree here and there. But my main go-to project will be this one. So here it is on the back of my Kindle. <laughs> this is on 40 count silk gauze, one over one half crust. And this is my starting point. And we'll see how far I get before my next video. Um, before my next video, I will only have had the weekend to work on it. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So there may not be a boatload of progress. But maybe by the second video of May, it could be done. That would be really cool. 
be nice if this took about half the time and about 10 days and then I can have 10 days on quick stitch iris that would be fun so we'll see how long that one takes and this is my regular sandwich size baggie <laughs> that I keep this in because it's so tiny and I have a three by three inch frame that I'm planning to frame it in I already have that so that'll be fun to get that done so yeah oh yeah on the <clears throat> on the stitching shelf over the, the three days of the 24 hours of cross stitch I got 1,826 half stitches and 10 hours and 30 minutes roughly so it was a fun experiment but I know that that uh, that type of challenge is not really for me because I can't I I feel too guilty like putting off things that I should be doing I was working on things for my Etsy shop part in the mornings on Fridays and Saturdays and doing stuff with my family you know we had a water balloon fight fight as a family on Saturday because of the the hot weather outside the kids played in the water Friday and Saturday not so much on Sunday we stayed inside um, but Friday and Saturday were the hot days those were those bright leaves when it got up to 91 so <clears throat> They thoroughly enjoyed it, got soaking wet in the backyard, so that was great. <laughs> so anyways, and I even got in on the water balloon fight, so that was fun. Um, I think that's all for now, so I hope you have a lovely stitching week. Enjoy the last of your April, and whatever you're planning to do for Mania, have fun with that. And in the meantime, happy stitching. Bye.